In addition to helping us determine where the graph of a function is increasing and decreasing, remember positive derivative means increasing, negative derivative means the original function is decreasing, but the first derivative can also help us to find relatively high points called relative maxima or local maxima um, and relatively low points, which we would label as relative minima or local minima of a graph. These help us to graph a function and they're called relative or local because they are the highest and lowest points relative to the points nearby or around the local points. But mm, these may not be the absolute highest and absolute lowest points. So looking at this graph, for example one, we're going to label where the function is increasing and decreasing and make a conjecture about the relative extrema that it creates. So you may already be able to look at a graph and identify relative max and relative min from algebra. Now we're going to use calculus to figure out why that is or what the pattern is with the derivative. So I'm going to start by labeling this graph. So I'm just going to read it left to right and figure out am I increasing or decreasing. So we read graphs just like English. We read left to right. And from left to right, this first piece is rising. So it has a positive first derivative. Then I see I have a soft peak. The derivative at every soft peak is zero. And then if I label it left to right or read it left to right again, I'm falling as I trace it. So this is a negative first derivative. I have another soft peak here, which means the derivative is zero. And then reading it left to right again, I start rising. So I have a positive first derivative again. So we want to see where are the relative max and min. So one way to figure this out is to look at the graph and be able to identify it, which maybe you can. Um, another way is to make a sign chart out of it, just like we did on the page before. So this is good practice with a sign chart. We're going to make this into a sign chart. The first most important thing that goes on to our sign chart is where the derivative is zero. So for this one, the first place where the derivative is zero is here. It's at x is negative one. And the other place where the derivative is zero is here. It's at x is positive one. So we would label where is the derivative zero. That's the first thing that goes on our sign chart. And then we label what's happening with the derivative before and after each point. So testing points before you'd see you have a positive slope. Then between the two places where the derivative zero is a negative slope. And then after one is a positive slope again. So if we think about the shape of this, we go from a positive slope to a zero slope to a negative slope back to a positive slope. So we would get the same general shape as we see to the side here. So this place where the derivative is zero has a sign change from increasing to decreasing. Any sign change from increasing to decreasing is going to give us a relative max. That's where you switch from positive to a negative derivative. So graphically, this point here is a relative max. Increasing to decreasing gives us a local or relative max. And then this next one, we switch from decreasing to increasing. Any switch from decreasing to increasing is going to give us a relative min. So relative min is a switch from decreasing to increasing. Looks like this. So you're falling, you have a zero slope, and then you're rising. So there's our conjecture about relative maximum. This is going to help us when we don't have a picture of a graph. If we're just able to make this sign chart here, and we see that we have a positive to a negative slope, increasing to decreasing gives us a relative max. And there's nothing really to memorize. I would always just draw myself a little picture and see what I get. So let's try that on the next one. We'll just label it and see what kind of extrema we get. So following this, at first it's falling left to right. So we're decreasing. Then we have this part here where it's kind of flat. So remember, if you have a flat or constant part, the derivative is zero. 
if we keep following this graph, it starts going back down left to right, so it starts decreasing again. We have a soft peak here, so the derivative is going to be 0. And then if we keep tracing left to right, it goes up for the first time. It is increasing on this interval. So if we're looking for relative extrema, we might be able to tell just by looking at the picture. Otherwise, we can make ourselves a nice sign chart, since that's what we're doing in this section, with and without pictures. So first number on my sign chart is x is 0, because that's the first place where the derivative is 0. So that goes on there. It's super important. Our next one is x is 3. That makes the derivative 0. Remember that was step 1 on the page before. It said find where the derivative is 0 and then test values before and after to see whether you have a positive or negative first derivative. So at first, this one has a negative first derivative. Before and after, x is 0 has a negative first derivative. And then after, we finally have our first positive derivative. So this first one, we go from negative to 0 to a negative derivative. That is not part of our pattern for relative max or relative min. So no sign change means no extrema. So if you switch from decreasing to decreasing, there's not really a switch. So you don't get a relative max or a relative min. So no relative max or min. Versus this one here at x is 3, the other place where the derivative is 0, switches from decreasing to increasing. If we draw ourselves a little picture under it. Decreasing to 0 to increasing. Does that look like a relative max or min? Decreasing to increasing means it's a relative min. So now let's go through on these two pictures and make some big conclusions here. We don't have a ton of space. We're going to work with what we've got. So first of all, if we go back to this first example and we write some increasing and decreasing in interval notation. So looking at my sign chart or the picture, I'm going to use my sign chart for this one. I'm increasing before negative 1 and after positive 1. So before negative 1, I would say negative infinity to negative 1. Union after 1 would be 1 to infinity. There's my increasing intervals. And then I'm decreasing just between those two places where the derivative is 0. So between negative 1 and positive 1. If we do that with example 2, we're going to go through and do the same thing, write it in interval notation. So increasing, looking at my sign chart, the only place it's increasing is after 3. So 3 on to infinity. And then we would say decreasing is before 0 and between 0 and 3. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 3. Notice again I don't go from negative infinity all the way to 3 because technically it's not a negative derivative everywhere. This at x is 0 is not decreasing. It's a flat part of the graph. So we want to not include that on the decreasing interval. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 3. And then the other thing that we can label on these graphs, I'm trying to switch colors, make it stand out, is write, writing these as points. So relative max, this point here, we would call this, it's negative 1 in the x value. It's where the derivative was 0, is negative 1. And the y value is maybe like 0.9. It doesn't look like it's quite all the way up to positive 1. You could say 0.8 or 0 0.6. It's somewhere between 0 and 1. I'd accept really anything for those decimals. Same thing with labeling this relative min point. Point means we're going to label the x and the y. I would say that the x is definitely 1. And the y value, again, is some decimal. So somewhere between 0 and negative 1, maybe negative point. 7, something like that. It looks like it's half over halfway between 0 and negative 1. And then for the graph below, to label a relative max, well, a relative max has that increasing to decreasing sign change. We didn't have any, 
So if we were asked for the relative max point, it's kind of a trick question because there is none. And then for relative min point, it would be where the derivative was zero down here. We would say x is three and the y value again is a decimal, so maybe like negative 3.3. Somewhere a little beyond negative three, even. And that is a ton of information on one page, but that's really all we could be asked in this section about a graph. Looking at a graph, can you label where it's increasing and decreasing in interval notation? If you're struggling, try to make it into a sign chart. Sometimes that's helpful. And then also finding relative max and relative min. Relative max, you're looking for increasing to decreasing. Relative min, you're looking for decreasing to increasing. If there is no sign change, there's just no extrema there.